Yes, guys. So let's start looking at question number 33 here. Now we are continuing with India's 115 yet. So let's look at question number 33. An entity manufactures and sells computers that include an assurance type warranty for the first 90 days. So it's just an assurance that the product is working fine. There's any fault which I, I find in that particular product. Either I return the product and replace the product or I get it repaired. The entity offers an optional extended coverage plan under which it will repair or replace any defective part uh, for a period of three years from the expiration of the assurance type warranty. So after this 90 days, I have offered you an extended coverage which will be applicable for three years. Over that period, either there will be a repair or replacement of a defective part. Since the optional extended coverage plan is sold separately, the entity determines that the three years extended coverage represents a separate performance obligation. Absolutely true. Since it is sold separately, I have to treat it as a separate performance obligation and such performance obligation of an extended coverage should be recognized as revenue over the period of the coverage. That means over the entire period of three years, I will recognize revenue. Look at it. The total transaction price, the sale of computer and the extended warranty together is 36,000. The entity determines that the standalone selling price of computer and warranty is 32,000 and 4,000. So exactly at the same price, if you add both of them, it will come down to 36,000. So that computer along with 90 day warranty is sold for 32,000. The three years extended warranty or extended coverage plan is sold for 4,000. The inventory value of computer is 14,400. Furthermore, the entity estimates that based on their experience, it will incur 2,000 in the cost of repair defects that arise within 90 days of coverage period for the assurance type warranty. So during that 90 days of assurance warranty, there will be an expected cost of 2000 rupees per unit being met. Now he's asking you to require pass the required journal. Entry. Remember guys, this 32,000, I will recognize as revenue immediately on the day on which I have done the transaction or I have completed the transaction. So here, look at it. First, how much did I receive? I received 36,000 as revenue. So bank account debit 36,000. Two, what is the credit which I have to give to? I'll have to give a credit to the sale for 32,000. I have to give a credit to the sale for 32,000 because that is representing the price of standalone price of computer. However, since I expect to incur 2000 rupees for the period of the 90 days of, uh, you know, warranty or assurance warranty, I'll have to recognize even this 2000 as a cost. Therefore, what is the entry bank account debit 36 warranty expense account debit 2000 to revenue 32,000 to provision for warranty expenses 2000 to provision for warranty expenses 2000. Two, revenue from extended coverage, 4,000. This revenue from extended coverage will be recognized as revenue or will be deferred, will be recognized over the entire period of the coverage that is for three years. Look at the entry that they have passed. Bank account debit 36,000, warranty expense account debit 2,000, to warranty accrued warranty cost of 2,000, to contract liability because he is deferring that uh, recognition of 4,000 rupees for extended warranty over the period of the contract that is three years to revenue immediately I will recognize 32,000 of revenue. The second entry is just an additional entry that he has passed. He wrote the entry as cost of goods sold to inventory to the extent of cost of inventory of computer that is 14,400. That's an additional entry. The first entry is the most important entry. I'll repeat how he has written it. I sold a computer along with an extended warranty for 36,000. I collected 36,000. So bank account debit 36,000, right? Two, 32,000 is my revenue from sale of computer to be recognized immediately. Two, accrued revenue or liability for extended warranty 4,000, which I will recognize as revenue over the period of warranty. That is an entire three years, right? But there is a 2000 rupee of estimated cost during the assurance warranty period. For such 2000 rupees, I am adding an entry 
as assurance expense to a liability for assurance warranty. Now, what is this liability for assurance warranty? He used the name accrued warranty cost because these are expected costs. So I'm creating a provision to that extent. Clear? Moving on, question number 34. Entity sells 100 ultra life batteries of 2000 each, provides the customer with five years guarantee that the battery will withstand the elements and continue to perform to the specifications. The entity, which normally provides one year guarantee to the customers purchasing the ultra light batteries, determined that the year two uh, through year five represents a separate performance obligation. The entity determines that 170,000 out of the entire two lakh of transaction price should be allocated towards batteries and 30,000 towards service warranty based on the estimated standalone price and their relative selling price allocation. The entity's normal one year uh, warranty cost is just one rupee per battery, which is immaterial among that entire 2000. If you want to recognize, you recognize, otherwise you can leave it because it is immaterial. Even if you consider it as material, I'll give you what is a journal entry which is necessary to be passed. Pass the necessary journal entries. Pass the first entry. Bank account debit. How many batteries? 100 batteries, each battery of 2000. So bank account debit, 2 lakhs. 2. Revenue. Revenue from sale of battery to be recognized on the date of transaction based on your standalone selling prices and relative price allocation is 1 lakh 70,000. 2. Your contract liability or the extended guarantee liability is 30,000. This guarantee liability will be recognized as revenue from year 2 to year 5 over the period of the contract. Clear? Not at the point of contract. It will be recognized as revenue over the period of contract that is for 4 years. Now someone will come with a question. Sir, first year warranty you did not take into consideration. I will come to that. I said, since the normal entity's warranty cost is only 1 rupee per battery, I would generally ignore that concept. However, since I have to recognize an entry, I'll recognize the entry like this for 100 rupees. What is the entry that you will recognize? It is 1 rupee per battery for 100 batteries. So I'll recognize the entry as warranty expense account debit to provision for warranty. That is 100 into 1 rupee per battery. That is 100 rupees. Clear? Guys, the answer is not 10,000 guys, that is 100 rupees because he has given it as 1 rupee per battery. So it is 100, not 10,000. It is 100. Look at question number 35. Production company Y sells a television show uh, to a television company X. The consideration under the arrangement is fixed amount of 1000 plus 100 advertisement slots. So the consideration is given in two forms, cash, non-cash. How much is cash? 1000. How much is non-cash? 100 advertisement slots. They determine, uh, why determine standalone selling price of the show to be 1500 and based on market estimates, why estimate that the fair value of advertisement slots is 600. Determine what is the transaction price. Here, to the extent of the non-monetary part or the non-cash consideration in the contract should be measured based on their fair value which is already given to us as 600. Therefore, 1000 rupees in cash plus 600 rupees is the fair value of the advertisement slot. The total amount is, ad, uh, is coming down to 1600. If the fair value of advertisement slot is not given to us, then the straight standalone price of 1500 will be considered as transaction price. However, since the fair value of the advertisement slot is given to us, the transaction price in the given question should be considered as 1600. Question number 36. Customer C is in the middle of a two year contract with Telco Limited, its wireless service provider, and is required to pay an early termination penalty if it is terminating the contract today. If C cancels the existing contract with B Limited and signs two year contract with Telco, D Limited, uh, Telco D Limited for 800 rupees per month. Then D Limited promises a con at the contract inception, uh, inception to give C a one-time credit of 2000 referred to as point in port in credit. 
the amount of port in credit does not depend on the volume of ser uh, of service subsequently purchased by C Limited during the two years contract. Determine what is the transaction price. Look at what he is saying here. He is saying here that customer C is in the middle of a two year contract with telecom B. Let's say Airtel. I am a customer. I have a two year contract with Airtel Limited. Okay, Airtel subscription of my mobile phone. If I do early termination and port myself to Jio, Jio is saying I will charge you a monthly cost of 800 rupees for a two year cost, for a two year uh, contract. But since you are porting in from Airtel as a token of appreciation for choosing Jio, Jio is paying you 2000 rupees extra at the point of porting. Then he is saying it is not dependent on service subsequently. What should be the transaction price? You tell me what is the transaction price to uh, you know the teleco telecom uh, company delimited. If I am Jio, I am supposed to get from the customer eight hundred rupees over three uh, over two years period. Eight hundred rupees per month over two years contract twenty four months. So what is twenty four into eight hundred? Twenty four into eight hundred is one second. Twenty four months into eight hundred rupees is 19,200 is the transaction price of the contract. However, since you are porting from that network, I am giving you 2,000 rupees as incentive. Minus 2,000. Therefore, the amount of transaction price should be considered as 17,200. As 17,200. This 17,200 is for 24 months. Therefore, each month over the period of contract when I keep recognizing revenue, then the transaction price of 17,200 should be recognized as revenue over 24 months on a straight line basis for telecom company D. Therefore, instead of recognizing 800, I will only recognize the revenue to the extent of 716.67 every month. Look at question number 37. Teleco G Limited grants a one-time credit to of 50 rupees to a customer in month 14 of a two-year contract. Month 14 is somewhere during second year, another 10 months to run because 24 months, two years contract. The credit is discretionary and is generated as a commercial gesture, not in response to a prior service issues, often uh, referred to as retention credit. The contract includes a subsidized handset a voice and a data plan. G Limited does not regularly provide these credits. Therefore, customers do not expect them to be granted. How this has to be accounted for as per India's 115. Guys, this 50 rupees of one-time credit, which is generally granted on month 14 of a two-year contract, I'm saying it is at the discretion of the company or the Teleco G Limited. The customer, as you know, whoever, whoever is in the contract, is not expecting such a credit to occur to him in the uh, during month 14. Therefore, it cannot be considered as a part of transaction cost. It is purely discretionary in nature, cannot be considered as variable consideration. Here, it cannot be considered as variable consideration. It is purely discretionary in nature. Therefore, in this case, the transaction cost should not be reduced by that 50 rupees of one time credit. What if a customer gets one, uh, what if the telecom company G Limited provides a one-time credit to any customer? In such cases, I will always call this as a contract modification, a modification in the terms of the contract. Then what should I do? Whenever there's a modification to a contract in month 14, then the contract modification which alters the transaction price because the further transaction price should be reduced by 50. It has to be allocated over the remaining contract life, which is 10 months. Just to help you with an example, guys, here numbers are not there. So let me take some example and I'll give you. Let's say, for example, what is the contract period or contract term? My contract period is 24 months, right? I am attaching this. I am saying 
the price in the contract is let's say 200 rupees per month so what is the total transaction price actually transaction price is equal to rupee 4800 how many months over 24 months so what is the revenue to be recognized revenue recognized over the period of contract is equal to 200 rupees per month i'll keep on recognizing revenue like this 200 rupees per month 200 rupees per month i kept on recognizing until month 14 exactly during month 14 there is a contract modification what is a contract modification contract modification arised due to a credit of 50 rupees credit to customer is 50 what is the balance revenue to be recognized how much did i recognize 200 rupees per month i kept on recognizing how many months did i recognize over 14 months i recognized so how much did i recognize so far 14 into 200 which is exactly 2800 out of the total transaction pro or uh, contract value of 4800 which is the total transaction price minus i recognize for 14 months 200 rupees per month therefore the total amount which i already recognized was 2800 and the balance revenue to be recognized was 2000 What is the modified transaction price? My modified transaction price is rupee nineteen fifty. Remaining contract term. How many months are remaining out of 24 months 14 months is already done so balance 10 months is left therefore revenue to be recognized revenue recognized over the remaining contract life is 195 rupees per month so every month after that 50 rupees of credit if it was allowed to a particular customer instead of recognizing a revenue of 200 rupees per month i will allocate it over the remaining contract term which is 10 months therefore i will start recognizing a revenue of only 195 instead of 200 rupees per month over the remaining contract term that is 10 months this is typically the change which occurs whenever you have a modification in the transaction price during the pre period of the contract.